Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso right here on SABC3. It's time to head into the wild right now. Now, poaching is a real problem affecting animals all over the world. And we often bring in experts to tell us a bit about why we should care about this and what these animals mean to the environments they live in. But what we don't really know is what the first line of defense against animal attacks is. Now, game rangers are incredibly important, and unfortunately, their line of work is quite dangerous. Not only do they work with wild animals, but they are also the first line of defense against the deadly poachers. Now, joining us this morning in studio, we have Dennis Portas from the Fairy Glen Game Reserve to tell us a bit more about the life as a game ranger. Dennis, thank you very much for joining us this morning, man. Oh, Lovely to you have you. Us. Yeah, man, uh, once again, I think you guys are doing phenomenal work. I mean, oh, I don't you. think you get the recognition that you, that you <laughs> deserve, but um, this is why you're here this morning. So let's talk about it. What is the real difference between a game ranger and a conservationist? Well, a game rangers, primarily, their, their work is all about the animals, the, mm -hmm. the maintenance, the reserve work, just with the animals. Then you get the different one that is a field guide. A field guide is more to educate guests on game drives and nature walks, and a conservationist is primarily just to promote conservation yeah. and, of course, the natural resources. Yeah. All right. So the game rangers are the one that should be wearing a badge, like like a sheriff. <laughs> That's yeah. uh, who you guys are. Um, so cool, cool. Run me as as a game ranger yourself. Run me through some of your duties. Exactly what your work entails. Well, it's all about the well-being of the game. Okay. And the caretake of the game, there's a lot of different aspects on a game reserve. Uh, defense lines, uh, bush clearing, fire prevention, all the basic stuff with not, nothing to do with clients. Just the wildlife, the wild yeah. side. So like, that yeah. is where you guys Better are. Better law, law enforcement and those type of things. Okay. Yeah. You see the badge, you see <laughs> the words. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people might not know that. I've got, I've got a big love for the bush you know i grew up in the northern parts of the country as well yeah. johannesburg and you know lots of traveling with my dad and family into the wild so a game ranger was one of those things that that uh, it almost attracted me as a child and was something that i possibly wanted to pursue but uh, obviously i went in a different direction <laughs> what are some of the things that you that you undergo to become a game ranger and a successful one at that well it's a tertiary um course that you need to do a diploma in nature conservation or either uh, game rights management. It's usually at right, one of the institutions. It's usually a three-year course, uh, two years theoretical, and one year practical in the bush. Yeah. Okay, so there's a, there's quite a bit of and studying involved. Yeah, of as course, well. there's a lot of stuff that comes with it: advanced weapon, weapon handling, and those type of things. Okay, okay, and then of course the experience. Yeah. I mean, you can't, and then the experience. Awesome. Dennis, lovely to have you this morning. Thanks for giving us a glimpse into the life of a game ranger. You're not done yet. We've got a lot of talking still to do. Uh, when we come back with Dennis, we are <coughs> talking about these majestic animals right here that you see on the screen. Our beautiful rhino. Stick around for that. You can also call us with your uh, wild-related questions. O two one four three zero nine double eight one. That is the question if you want to ask Dennis anything around being a game ranger or just our wild in general. It's my feel good breakfast show. Now, tomorrow is a very important day. It's the 22nd of September. It's World Rhino Day, putting our beautiful rhino, which I consider part of our heritage, I can say, under the spotlight and why we should look after them. And we have Dennis with us this morning from the Fairy Glen Game Reserve just to talk about these majestic animals. Dennis, thank you once again for joining us this morning. Um, you just handed me this book, Higgins and Lady. What is this book about? This is very, very cool. Well, this is the two rhinos that is on our reserve. Um, they were poached in 2011. And we managed to pull them through. Living wow. wonder. Yeah. Okay, cool, man. And people can get their hands on this little story. I mean, well, it's such it's, a yeah. almost called a love story. It is a love yeah. story. It's love a, story. It's a bit of tear and a lot of a lot of smiles at the end. Wow, man. Um, so you, so a lot of hard work went into that book. Yeah. I can just imagine, man. And at yeah, the reserve, you can get it at the reserve, uh, Ferry Glen and Booster. Okay. In, it's on the website, everything, yeah. Awesome stuff. Higgins and Lady, man, I can't wait to read this. Thank you very much. Okay, cool. So let's talk about our, our beautiful rhinos. How many species of rhino are there? I think a lot of people only think uh, there's, there's, <coughs> you get the black rhino and the white rhino. Yeah, we got the black and the white in, in okay. Africa. And then we got the greater one-horned rhino, which is in India. Uh, it's more like a water swim like a rhino, almost okay. like a hippo rhino. <laughs> <laughs> hippo um, rhino. And then in, in Asia, we get two types, the Sumaratan, um, which is the hairy rhino. It's about really? 100 left of them in the world. Wow. And then 
You also get a Javan, which is uh, between 61 and 63 only left in the world, also in Asia. So, so all of these five species, you know, across the board, they're all endangered. Oh, everybody. That is very, very sad, sad and shocking at that. Okay, so let's focus on South Africa. How many rhinos do we have left in South Africa? Because, I mean, reports have been surfaced, you know, the numbers are on the rise, but they are still on the endangered list. It's still a very, very big problem. Do we ever see a, a future where they are not on the endangered list? Well, I don't think we ever see kind of reach that point. Uh, yeah. In the 19, early 1900s, there was only like between 50 and 100 white rhino left in South Africa. Uh, good conservation, game farms, uh, management, all those type of things helped us to bring up the numbers of white rhino between 19,700 now to 21,000 okay. approximately. Uh, black rhino, a uh, bit more, less, yeah. uh, 5,000, 5,400 left. Really? Yeah. That is very, very scary. And I mean, this is, you know, you can't stress enough about the importance that game rangers do in terms of, you know, just providing support and protection for these rhinos as well and also the anti-poaching units that i know is in the yeah. field so a big hand of uh, applause to them as well but um, the rhino horn in itself i mean we spoke about we know that you know this is what they're obviously after what is it about the rhino horn um, just once again i mean we hear these yeah, stories yeah, constantly yeah. well the basic the horn consists is made out of a protein called keratin right? like your nails like your nails and your hair yeah. it's the same thing and the core of it is uh cal between calcium and melanin now in the Chinese, Japanese, Japan, all those countries, uh, there's a big myth. Uh, they think it can do something to your body. Uh, from cancer to blood pressure to epilepsy. In Vietnam, some millionaires make a powder out of it and drink an alcoholic drink fr uh, from it. Yeah, so yeah. It's, but it's all ridiculous. It's been proven over and over and over again. It's, it's got yeah. no effect on a human body. Oh, wow. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dennis. Uh, crazy information. 5,000 black rhino around there. That is shocking. Well, call us with your wildlife-related questions. Our lines are open 021-430-9881. We have Dennis here from the Fairy Glen Game Reserve. Also, check out this book that you can get at the reserve, A Love Story of Higgins and Lady. Very cool. Dennis will be back with us in just a bit. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. You're tuning into your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Express Only on SABC3. It's um, Into the Wild right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show with Dennis from the Fairy Glen Game Reserve. We're talking about being a game ranger. We just unpacked um, the dire situation around our rhinos just ahead of World Rhino Day, the 22nd of September. That's tomorrow. But right now we're focusing back again on game rangers. A very, very tif uh, difficult and also dangerous job dealing with uh, wild animals and then you have the threat of poachers as well. Dennis, once again, thank you for joining us this morning. Our lines are also open if you want to ask Dennis is anything maybe about becoming a game ranger or what they do in the wild 021-430-9881 that's the number all right dennis so um there's many articles out there of game rangers you know being killed or injured with uh, by the animals that they work with uh, of course they are wild animals does it ever become too dangerous um, for a game ranger to be in a certain scenario or is this what you guys do you are just up front and center uh, up front and center, the more dangerous, the more we like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Special breed of people, yeah. you guys. Well, it depends on the situation. Okay. Every, we get trained to assess every different time you go into the wild, it's different. Yeah. So this, it's more difficult to go into certain times where like lion is feeding. That is a, it's a dangerous place. Yeah, so when elephants got a baby, rhino has got a baby. That is not a good time to go to clubs. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so it depends on their temperament. That is just like humans. Uh, you yeah. get your good day and you get your bad day. <laughs> yeah, I see, and, and it's up to you as a game ranger to, to, to understand that. Yeah. yeah, to understand that. I mean, I, I, I had the opportunity to to uh, take an orphaned rhino for a walk, uh, you know, once before. And it was it was amazing because, I mean, he was used to human interaction, mm. but man, gets the heart pumping still because you never know what he's <laughs> thinking. Um, so it's not only the wild animals that poses a big threat to you as game rangers. Of course, poachers is a big, big issue as well. Mm. Um, having having the big five as well, like you were saying, on, uh, you know, your game reserve, Fairy Glen. How big of a threat are they really to you guys, the poachers, if you are now out in the field? Well... I think down in the Western Cape, we are not that, in that sense, so, yeah. um, what do you call it, uh, for us. Yes, yeah. But more in the Kruger National Park and those areas, uh, where the areas are much bigger, these guys know they're criminals. <laughs> yeah. They're coming to poach what we love. Yeah. And, of course, that 
that's the issue for us. And of course, if they know they're going to get caught, they're going to go yeah. to jail. So they will protect themselves and they will shoot and, they, and we will shoot back. And, and you guys are, are, you know, the first line of things. You are there, you are in the yeah. field. And this is why it's incredible the type of work that you guys are doing. But you're also responsible for the safety of tourists and, you know, for you know, civilians coming through to the resort. What are some of the measures that you guys need to put in place to ensure the safety um, of, of people visiting the resorts? Well, we got, a, a, on the reserve, we got a lot of people walk, walking the fences, see if it's broken, being cut, uh, people monitoring the animals, and then the field guys take the, the guests. As, as rangers, we only deal with the animals. So for me, before a game drive goes out, I will make sure they're good yeah. and well. Yeah. Make sure they're good and well. There we go. So that's it's only enjoyment yeah. from the civilians part. Thank you very much. We're going to be back with Dennis in just a bit for one last chat. We are uh, heading our attention back to our rhinos and what happens after a poaching scenario. Stick around for that. It's my feel-good birthday show. <laughs> Fun in the kitchen, indeed. We are back now, though. One last time with Dennis uh, Potters from the Fairy Glen Game Reserve. We're talking about being a game ranger, um, what that entails, and also what our situation around our rhinos are currently. We have also our pups joining here this morning. They're chilling with us. Um, Dennis, thank you very much once again for joining us. Um, for our last chat, let's focus back on our rhinos. Of course, World Rhino Day happening tomorrow, the 22nd of September. I think a very, very important day for these animals. Shocking statistics. Only 5,000 black rhino left in the South African wild, which is very, very scary. But when it comes to, oh, there we go. We have a call. I've just modified Joseph. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good, thank you. All the way from Bloemfontein. What's your comment for Dennis or, or question? Yes, what I want to know is what, what are the requirements to be a game ranger? Okay, so we covered that a little bit earlier on. In case you missed it, Dennis, if you just want to... Want to oh, run it's it a tertiary, tertiary educator uh, at one of the institutions. It's uh, either a diploma in nature conservation or game range management, which is usually a three-year course. One, okay. year, one year practical in the end and two years theoretical in the beginning, yeah. All right. There we go. Joseph, thank you very much, man. So, yeah, I'm sure your good friend Google can also help out as to where, yeah. what, which institutions can help you out. But it is a qualification that you need to go and get. All right. Thank you, Joseph. Right. So, so rhinos, once again, uh, poaching, obviously, a very, very big issue. Um, for rhinos to survive after an attack, I mean, is it possible? Um, how often do they survive after a poaching attack? Well, they don't survive too often. Uh, we want to come see, have to see how they look when after after survival. Yeah. Can more than welcome to come a fairy land. We've got two living wonders yeah. walking there. Um, it's a difference when they're getting darted and and then axed, yeah. or getting shot and then axed. Okay. In the Kruger National Park, where the area is much bigger, they they use guns and they shoot. At our reserve, which is a bit smaller, more, more intact, sound yeah. is a is a problem for them with shooting those big rifles. So they use the tranquilizing guard, which is much softer, yeah. and they left him for dead. Wow. Axed them and left them. Did that, I? Yeah, and this is also like a story that you see on yeah, the book there the about story, Higginson yeah. Lady. Yeah. Um, now, can, it, can, can rhino horns grow back after, like your nails? We said the same kind well, of substance. It is depends it on how deep they axed them. Okay. Um, our rhinos was cut so deep that actually the airways were opened up. Ah. It was, it was, it was uh, it's not a good sign. A science. traumatic uh, experience, yeah. Yeah, it was not nice. But when they dehorn them, they cut them a certain length, and then, of course, they will grow back. Okay. It's like your nail. You cut your nails, and they grow yeah. back. But, if, but you if you damage the bed at the end, beginning of your nail, they won't grow There's back. There's no chance. No. All right. But, I mean, the big thing is, I mean, the rhino horn, that is their defense. That is how they defend themselves. Mm. Um, so without the rhino horn, I mean, does that render them completely defenseless uh, out in the wild? I believe so, yeah. Uh, we've seen it on our reserve. Uh, the male Higgins that we have on the reserve, uh, he was a very aggressive rhino. He was one of I was I was really scared oh, really? of him in the beginning. <laughs> um, now he he's defenseless. He will attack, and then suddenly will realize he, he yeah. can't attack anymore. He doesn't have a horn. How are you going to protect himself? Wow. So you can see it in his in his whole being a rhino has been taken from him. Yeah. Uh, he's just a two thousand kilogram. A lump walking Animal, in yeah. the field and feeding. And yeah. that is where it becomes very, very sad because you want these guys to flourish, you know, yes. naturally in the mm -hmm. wild with their horns because they yeah, look Of course, they need the well. horn to break bushes and That's they the need to, the second horn to protect their eyes. Yeah. So 
Yeah, without a horn, I think that they are pretty much defensive. That is why we need to look after these incredible creatures. Dennis, thank you very much. We admire pleasure. your work. Thank and you. keep it up, man. Keep our rhinos safe. And, uh, and also, thank you very much for keeping us civilians safe and giving us great experiences there. Dennis from the Fairy Glen Game Reserve out in Worcester. And uh, absolutely amazing what these gentlemen are doing.